Hi all, I'm Tony, this is SV Tapatia, and we are still <laughs> building a cruising sailboat. Um, as you probably know, the initial launch occurred, went out on sea trials for a couple of months, and now over the winter here, I'm just doing a few upgrades, uh, a few add-ons, things that will make it uh, better for us to set off and travel further afield. Yeah. So it's, it's late January, um, it's that time of year when the locals are out in the forest with their chainsaws, so I hope that's not going to disturb you. I can hear somebody out chopping firewood now, and fair enough. Uh, this week, I'm going to do something a little bit different, or slightly different, in that I'm going to concentrate on one thing, one thing that I've fabricated. There are various things going on in the workshop, but I say I just want to concentrate on this one thing and that's because I think it's got some interest value or at least I certainly hope so. I've bought a couple of new tools and one of those I think is, is worth uh, saying something about particularly. So to do that I'm going to show you the fabrication of the stainless piece that, that's fitted to the tiller. Now you just before we get to that though if you like videos about boating, sailing, and boating DIY, um, please hit that subscribe button to support the channel so I can go on and make more of this sort of content. Thank you. Now, you might remember that I'm making a second tiller. This is really only a backup piece. The, the original tiller was perfectly fine, but I felt the need or felt the desire to have a backup tiller just in case. And in the end, I've, I've decided to make a, a tiller out of ash wood, um, trying to make it fairly nice. Uh, and it will be the primary tiller, and the one that I had originally will go up on as the backup. But on the original tiller, I had a stainless fit in where it fitted to the rudder, and I wanted to make something pretty much the same. But there was one part of that I wanted to do differently, because on the original, I, I had three sheets of metal that I welded together, so the two sides and the top, and I welded that all up. I bent the top around the back end, welded it all up with long seam welds all the way around. And this time I wanted to try bending it um, so I could minimize the amount of welding. Basically just weld the back piece on and bend the three sides to shape. Now you have to realize that this is two millimeter thick, 316 stainless, and it's not the easiest stuff in the world to bend, uh, particularly in the home workshop with the, with the kit I've got here. You know, the chance of bending it tidily with a hammer and vice are, are fairly slim, I felt. And I haven't got a metal brake. A metal brake is a, is a device that you can clamp a piece of sheet metal in, and you've got a handle and you can fold it up with that. Um, but looking online, you know, the price of a, of a metal brake that was capable of bending two millimeter stainless was, was scary. That wasn't going to happen. Um, so I had a look around and I found a tool that I thought would do the job. And I'm going to show you that very soon. Now, here's the original steel fitting. And as you'll see, where I've welded it along there, firstly, it's slightly uneven. And secondly, it does, you know, it tends to, well, rust is perhaps not the right word. Maybe it is rust, very, you know, sort of surfaced rust where, where the welding's occurred because the heat from the welding changes the properties of the metal. Now, I have bought some citric acid to passivate that or pacify it or whatever you call it, passivate, I believe, which should stop the rust in. But um, I say I wanted to fold it. And you look at the one I've done here where I folded it. I'm not going to have that issue there because there's no heat bin on that part. So it's much better, I feel. So this is, is what I've bought. It's, it's two parts. This one, as you see, has got a right angled uh, sort of groove in it. And this one's got this sort of knife part. Now, with these screws, you can take there's knife parts in sections. So you can take sections out for, for bending narrower pieces of, of metal. It's in, it's in three sections, two sort of one inch wide ones and a two inch wide one. So that's one inch, that's another one inch there and a two inch wide one. And you can set them as you like and they fit on the vise. Like this. Got magnets on them. So there's magnets, a pair of magnets on there. And they fit on the vise like that. 
and obviously you and it all lines up so that the knife comes right into the middle of the V section groove and uh, it's very very good for bending metal bit of tatty old galvanized and you get the idea let's bend that, that end I think see what you can achieve with that that's pretty cool isn't it um, of course this is what half a millimeter thick or something and two millimeter stainless is a slightly different proposition Not bad. Not bad at all. yours.
good. It really does look good. So a quick word about grinders, because I've got three grinders that I use. I've got this fairly cheap angle grinder, which at the moment has got a, a one millimeter stainless cutting disc on it. Cut stainless beautifully, but they disc wear down really quickly. And I've just had to order a new box of 50 of these cutting discs. They don't last very long. Cut great though. I've got the DeWalt grinder. I'll that cheap one, by the way, is 115 millimeter. Um, the DeWalt's of 125, and I keep that with a stainless grinding disc on it for, for shaping. And then, of course, I've got the little Bosch grinder, battery powered. And for that, I have these stainless cutting discs, and these last for ages. You can cut an awful lot of stainless with these little things. Obviously the grinder hasn't got anything like the power of the plug-in one, nothing like it, but they, they do cut well. And then for deburring and smoothing up, I use these flappy discs on the little Bosch. And also they come in various grits, but they work very well and they last a long time as well. And when they get worn out, they obviously do smoother work. So they're quite useful that way. That's my grinder selection. I get a few questions about the, the welding stuff and as you will be aware no doubt I use a basic stick you know arc welding welder for welding stainless um, but I think the key point is is that it's an inverter welder and that um, I did originally have a, the old-fashioned stick welder arc welder but the the inverter does a far far better job so these little inverter welders are great and I thoroughly recommend getting one of those if that's the route you're going down and the rods I use I use these mainly use these Hyundai stainless uh, rods um, sometimes I use other ones I find actually the rods don't make the biggest difference. So the, having the inverter stick welder is the biggest factor in, in getting a decent weld. The ones I'm using now are two and a half millimeter diameter and I see here it recommends 50 to 85 amps. But on that two meter stainless I'm using far less. I'm using maybe 30 amps on that to weld it. Um, you can go as low as one and a half millimeter thick. Uh, it's, you've got to be pretty gentle with it and probably 
probably going below 30 amps. Yeah, certainly going below 30 amps on one and a half. But two millimeter, 30-ish amps, maybe a fraction over uh, with two and a half millimeter rods is what I was using and it came out well. And perhaps the last comment is the wire brush when you're brushing off for stainless, you cannot use an steel brush so this is a brass brush that i use um even if it's a stainless wire brush it's got to be good quality it's got to be, you know a, a cheap stainless brush won't do the job so i find a brass brush is good the only issue sometimes is that if you brush off and then return to weld some more sometimes a little particle of brass is broken off in there and you weld it and it gives a big flare up where the brass burns off in the weld um, doesn't happen often, but it can do, but a brass brush. Now the hole through the tiller where the, where the pin goes through that bolts it to the rudder, I wanted not to have exposed wood end grain there. I wanted to line it out with a bit of, with a bit of stainless tube. So I've got this, it's 14 millimeter diameter outside uh, with a 10 millimeter hole through it. So I cut the length of that and put it through there. And I wanted to make sure that was sealed. So I, I countersank the holes either side and I've shown you this little set of countersinks before, but, but they're very, very good. They're just cheap things from Amazon. But having a range, we've got 6.3 millimeter, 8.3, 10.4, 12.4, or let's say 16.5 and 20.5 millimeter diameter countersinks. It's, I've never had a range of countersinks, countersink diameters before, and they're really good. Thoroughly recommend.
Well, I've purchased one other new tool this week and it's, it's not very exciting, but it is the Barco Hacksaw. And it's, let me show you this one. So this is the Hacksaw I've got left at the moment and it's rubbish. You can't tension the blade on it, it's, it's, it's junk. These things are sold for peanuts, aren't they? And they're barely worth buying, really. Actually, I don't know how I got it. I don't remember buying it. But I used to have a snap-on hacksaw that was excellent until it fell apart and I lost one end and I couldn't get a replacement. So for a while, you know, I haven't had a good hacksaw. So in the end, I decided to invest in Barco, of what used to be Sandvik, and they're now owned by Snap-on. And I thought with my experience of the Snap-on hacksaw, I'd buy a Barco and it's great. The, the blade is tensioned by winding this bit here. The blade's beautifully tensioned, it cuts well. It's a little bit short, I wish I bought a bigger one, but other than that, it's a marvelous thing. And, and a good hacksaw is a must, isn't it? And here it is, the finished article, fitted to the tiller, the reinforced hole for the pin, and it all sealed in with Sikaflex 291i, which is a sealant and adhesive. So it's fitted and done, and I'm pleased, even though it's not perfect, I've got a couple of dings in it. Um, for my first attempt with that tool, I'm very, very pleased with the way it's come out, very pleased. And obviously much much less in terms of welded seam so um, with three on six stainless I expect it not to rust well there we go that's that for this week I'm pleased with the way it's turned out I'm very very happy with that bending tool which was you know cheap and low-tech and I say bending two millimeter thick stainless it is not easy that's turned out very very well um, that tiller is now basically finished I've just fitted the little pin for the uh, tiller pilot in there it's done uh, perhaps a bit more varnish to come still but um finished so moving on weather's getting good I should be going up to the boat I, next week I've got a few things to do up there one of the most important things is the rear engine crankshaft seal um, 
I'm going to be getting to that very soon. He says, looking at the weather out the window. Very, very soon. And we're getting close to being ready to, to set off on our spring adventures. Looking forward to that. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.